What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel and before you ask, yes, it's another attacker hero from the Doom Legend faction. But it's not the only thing about this hero, only b the only bad thing I mean. There is something else and it feels like DH Games is trying to listen to the community but in another way they are not. Look at that. This is an attacker, first thing. This is an attacker from the Doom Legion. We have only attackers, we need support. Second thing, the hero can bring attack down 40% to the enemy and with the first exclusive, uh, speed down 40% to the enemy. Two things we really need for the faction abyss, right? But you know what? It's conditioned and you are not gonna be able to apply these debuffs on the faction abyss because you need to have poisons on enemies in order to apply the, the debuffs. But she can put some poisons on enemies, but only if the target already have poison from another ally. Why? Tell me why. Look at that. We are going to talk about that in detail. Basic attack deals attack damage to a single enemy. If the target has a poison or a viper venom, there is a chance to inflict one layer of poison for two turns and deals extra poison damage, otherwise deals extra attack damage that ignores defense. So, how can I bring a poison or viper venom? She can't apply poison by herself. She needs to have viper venom on the target to apply poison. But in order to apply viper venom, as you can read here, Fangaro, so it is the basic attack, inflicts one layer of viper venom on the target with poison for five turns. So to apply P Viper Venom, the target needs to have a poison. And in order to apply a poison with, with her, you need to have already a poison on the target or Viper Venom. So in fact, in the Faction Abyss, she's gonna be useless. She won't be able to bring any poison, any attack down, and any speed down. <laughs> because there is no other poisoner in the Faction. So, what is the point? Tell me what is the point to have this kind of hero in the game. Maybe she's gonna be interesting in other contents, right? But we struggle a lot in this faction. You just have to change one simple thing on that hero here on the perceive. Instead of inflicts one layer of Viper Venom on the target with poison, replace with by without. It's gonna be enough because the target is gonna lose poison, so uh, five turns duration is gonna be great, good enough. And so you are, we are gonna be able to put some poisons and to lower the attack by 40% and the speed by 40%. The only thing that needs to be changed. And then, if you change that, the hero is gonna be usable in Faction Abyss. I, I'll, I hope that you are gonna listen to the video and make that change, otherwise uh, people are not gonna pull for that hero. Right? I'm not gonna pull for that hero if I don't have that, right? I don't wanna spend for that. And uh, so, let's continue. Deals uh, first active skill, attack damage to all enemies. If the target have poison or viper venom, one more time, there is a chance to inflict an extra poison on them for two turns and with a chance to reduce the attacks 40 by 40% for two turns. Otherwise, deals extra attack damage that ignores defense. Attack damage that ignores defense on the basic attack and first active skill. So in fact, it's not a po real poisoner, but more like a direct damage dealer. I don't know. Uh, so here up to three layers of Viper Venom. As for the target without poison, additionally increases Fang, Arrows, Crit Rate and Crit Damage. So definitely a direct damage dealer. Uh, also, after Poisonous Arrow, Rain, so the first active skill, or the ultimate deals damage, all layers of Viper Venom will be detonated. For every one layer of Viper Venom detonated, reduces the cooldown of all her skills by one turn, and deals damage based on the layers detonated. That's... it seems nice. So apparently she has a nice damage potential, I think, thanks to this detonation kind of stuff and uh, crit rate, crit damage, and ignore defense. But one more time, just change this thing. Allow her to place some poisons by herself. Otherwise, even if she deals on damage, we don't need only damage dealers, right? 
the cooldown of Poisonous Arrow and Viper Twist, first active skill and the ultimate is not affected by anyone other than Zora herself, and damage dealt by detonating Viper Venom is considered as a skill damage. And on the ultimate, three stages of attack damage to all enemies, if the target has poison or Viper Venom, each stage deals extra poison damage, otherwise each stage deals extra attack damage that ignores defense. I don't know what, is what it is gonna mean. Maybe she's gonna deal more direct damage than poison damage. So if you are using her with poison heroes, she's gonna nerf her own damage. Dealing only po poison da no poison damage in all the defense, right? So maybe her damage are gonna be better with poisons, but in but in the faction one more time we'd have no poison at all. And she can't bring poisons by herself. First active skill, when she detonates Viper Venom, there is a chance to reduce the target speed by 40% for two turns. The more layers detonated, the higher the chance. Also, if Zora never detonates Viper Venom for three consecutive turns, increases self-crit damage by 60% for two turns at the, at the end of her third turn. Why not? This is a great one. Don't get me wrong, this is a great exclusive, but only if you are using at least another Poisoner in your team. So one more time, use less for the Faction Abyss. Second exclusive increases all extra damage dealt by Zora and the damage dealt by detonating Viper Venom. Great if her direct damage are good enough. Exclusive 3, when Zora enters a battle, additionally gains mastery and crit damage for 3 turns. The mastery bonus is useless in the Faction Abyss, one more time. Crit damage is great. If Zora has detonated Viper Venom before the effect ends, increases Zora's attack and mastery until the end of the battle. So this is a great one if you can apply Vi Viper Venom one more time. Otherwise, increases Zora's attack and crit damage until the battle ends. The only way to play her is with at least another Poisoner. So I would recommend Nita, for example, for dungeons. But... I don't know. Clearly, I don't know. You have definitely to change that word with bring without instead. So she will be able to place at least some poisons from, from time to time. And this is going to be a good hero. You, you could put, you, you could design a no some hero. And just because of that word, it's only an average hero. I don't think that I'm going to pull for her. I'm not sure. I'm gonna try maybe one PD and then if I don't have her, I'm not gonna be uh, mad. You know what? Because her potential is not that heavy, right? So let's talk about the next one, the epic one, Sheist, an epic hero from the Sunset Sages, a support one with a blue mark. And he is designed for PvP and to counter a, a beat, Lydia. Look at that. Basic attack, attack damage to a single enemy with a chance to inflict in prison for one turn. This is interesting to have that on a basic attack because imagine using that with a Ben Austin for example. You can imprison one enemy and so uh, the enemy is gonna be uh, and he won't be able to uh, have turn meta increase or turn meta bonuses. So it's pretty nice. First active skill damage to all enemies with a chance to reduce the speed by 20% for two turns. 40% would have been better, but 20% is still interesting for an epic hero, right? The passive is interesting. When he is alive, reduces the, the enemy's effect resistance when they are inflicted with a debuff. That's great. And especially against uh, Pauline and Angi 3. Additionally reduces their effect resistance if they are inflicted with speed down or in prison. That's great because if you are using him with Lydia for example, you can imprison enemies. Or if you are using him uh, with a speed down reduction, or he, he can also provide the speed down reduction by himself. So it's interesting to lower the resistance of Pauline and be able to freeze Pauline for example. A ultimate deals attack damage to all enemies and reduces the target's turn meta. Reduces the target's turn meta instead. Why instead? If they are in speed down status already. I think they are gonna get more turn meta reduction if they are under speed down status. First active skill. When sandstone penetration, the ultimate, ends, there is a chance to inflict in prison on the entire opponent team for one turn. This is great. If the target's turn meter is no more than 30% by then, there is a chance to inflict in prison on them for one turn instead. I think you have more chance in that case to apply the in prison. 
Second exclusive, she is immune to speed down and in prison. When she is alive, all allies gain an extra effect resistance if they are inflicted with speed down or in prison. That's great against Lydia, right? Immune to speed down and in prison. I think it's it's really interesting for an epic hero for PvP. Exclusive level 3, if Schist cast re Retarding Sandstorm, as it, this is the first active skill, to enemies with speed down, there is a chance to reduce their speed by 40% for 2 turns instead. So there is the 40% speed down reduction with uh, an epic hero on the first active skill, that's great, with the same chance to reduce the target's defense by 60% for 2 turns. If you have a Brin healed in front of you, it can be great. Defense down 60%, she is gonna deal way less damage. And you can control enemies by lowering their turn meta. Speed by 40%, resistance. This is a great hero, epic one for PvP. So, small resume. She's great for a PvP. Uh, a lot of mechanics with imprison, speed reduction on enemies, 40%, turn meta reduction, he is immune to speed down reduction, he can increase the, your resistance, lower the resistance of enemies and the defense by 60% in AoE, that's a great hero for PvP and that's an epic hero. And, and a quick resume for Zora. She could be a great hero, but she is not only because she can't apply any poison, she can't apply any Viper Venom, because she needs to be played with another poisoner in your team, and without another poisoner, you can't apply the attack down 40% or the speed down 40% on the basic attack. So she is useless for PV uh, for faction abyss only because she can't apply Viper Venom on enemies with without any poison. Outside of that, she can be interesting in the poison team. Uh, probably she is going to be great for the weathering cost. And outside of that, she is probably going to be nice also with Nita in dungeons. But it's really sad because she is only an average hero where she could be a great hero. They only need to change this word with to without. And it's going to change everything for the hero. Hope they are listening to the video watching the video. So, next thing, now we are going to talk about the patch note. Because we have something really, really interesting that is coming this Thursday, finally we are going to know the truth. On the Wish events, uh, here we are finally going to have the drop rates of heroes on Excellent and Supreme Wishes. This is going to be so perfect. Finally, we are going to know the truth. Why only Veras are dropping and not the heroes we want. I think about Popper. Uh, if you, I don't know if you s watched my previous vid summon video on Popper, but I never be, I've never been able to summon any Popper after thousands of wishes. And we all know that the bad heroes already drop before the others. That's because heroes have different tiers. You have the limited heroes, probably above the others. Then you have tier 1 heroes, tier 2, tier 3. Popper is definitely a tier 1. And then you have Vera in top in tier 3. And so this is why Vera uh, always often drops, I think. I think this is the reason why. So this is going to be great. And then they all... Applying some adjustments to the chat here, uh, to the legendary heroes, mythic heroes you are going to summon, legendary artifact and equipment. Uh, at the moment, it is shown this way, so they are going to change that just a bit. Why not? Uh, then on the PvP, this is going to be a gr great quality of life because during your multi-battles, you are going to be able to watch your defeats. And that's going to be great. Because how many times... I did, I was doing my multi battles and I had to stop them in order to watch a replay. This is gonna be great. This is gonna be great. And uh, at out of that, they are gonna change the avatar of Nereid. Uh, it's gonna cha be changed, so at the moment it's, it looks like that. Okay, why not? And that's pretty all for the news. So, uh, one more thing. For people who say that I'm complaining about the fair arena, I am top 5 for now. So, I was able to uh, be um, to have a better ranked because I refreshed a lot the higher store and I was lucky to get key heroes. If I show that to you, uh, this is the the price. In fact, you can refresh it multiple times a day 
First time it's free, second time it costs four coins, the third time six coins, and all the, the other times it's, it's gonna cost eight times, eight coins. And this is the heroes I have now. I have all the key heroes. I'm missing one or two. I don't have Esther, I don't have Brynhild, and I don't have uh, Nicholas. If I had Nicholas, it would be even better, but look at that. Popper, Space, uh, Focus, Belton, Nerade. And Nerade is great in this content. She deals a lot of damage and she increases a lot the direct damage and dot damage of your team. So she is a great hero. To pair with Popper, because the more the debuffs on enemies, the higher the damage bonuses on your heroes. Rista is another great hero, but don't use Rista with Popper, otherwise Popper will not get enough turn meta at the beginning of the wave because they have the same speed. Popper has to has to have the highest amount of speed in the team in order to get the highest amount of turn meta increase at the beginning of the wave. Asindo, Melchior is great in this content, dealing a lot of damage too. Uh, Catherine to cleanse, Quinlan to control. Here I have more reveal, Elsa, so I'm pretty safe. Greta, I just picked her, so I don't know if she's a good hero, but she has a 75% chance to resist a debuff and a control, so I have two damage dealers in that team and uh, the immortal from Elsa, so if they try to kill me, I can do something and a control hero and then Pauline Nita with Little Jack because Little Jack is gonna increase a lot her damage. Uh, Bizadon to give her an extra turn and Ruin to control the turn meter of enemies and on the last one a great one too because I'm using Lydia with Elena. Elena reduces my, uh, my crit damage taken by 26% and paired to the damage reduction of uh, Lydia, I'm pretty safe. And also I have Donald Rebelli to nuke the entire team uh, to deal a lot of counter-attack damage and that guy to remove ng 3 to remove buffs and to deal a lot of damage and Tuck to cleanse my heroes and to freeze them. Another great hero for this, for that content. So that time, that was all for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If it's the case, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a nice day, and see you soon. Bye-bye.